Well, hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today. My name is Dan Hurley. I am a director and the chair of the Vancouver Island Economic Alliance. I'm also principal of the Hurley Martin Group, and I'm pleased to be hosting your uh, session and being the moderator today. I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of the Coast Salish, Nuchalit, and Kwakiutl peoples. I also want to thank our sponsors for today's session, Coastal Community Credit Union. This is now our 16th in a series of video sessions we've been holding over the last few months on how to inform and engage on economic vitality on Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands region, both now and along the road to recovery. Today, we're pleased to have John Tate, who is an employment relations specialist with Work BC. He is here to provide details on how your company or organization can hire students and take advantage of programs for funding those. But before we begin, some reminders about our format. Our, our presentation today will be approximately 10 minutes or so, followed by about 15 minutes of questions and answers. To ask a question, please enter it in the chat box at the bottom of your screen, and I will do my best to uh, pose as many questions as we can. If we don't get to your question today for some reason, please feel free to message our president, George Hansen, at george at viea, v -I -E -A, dot C-A. Now I'd like to turn things over to John. John, welcome to our Bahia Zoom room. John, are you there? I think we might have lost John. Well, there you go. That is, uh, that is our luck when it comes to Zoom sessions once in a while. Uh, so we will uh, wait for John to come back on and we might put things on pause until he returns. Hello again, everyone. Uh, we now have John Tate joining us by phone. We've had a technical glitch, but uh, John, please, uh, please go ahead with your presentation. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, start, sorry about the um, scenario with the internet. I guess I was just saying I'm on the phone, but I'm actually now able to get into the Zoom call. So hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, I'm going to share a presentation I have. Uh, just a screen, if you're bear with me on this. Okay, I guess I am not able to do that right now. Um, so what I was going to talk about was uh, if you have somebody want to hire that happens to be a new graduate, a lot of people forget that new graduates are considered by WorkBC unemployed people. And in that scenario, uh, we can help by offering services. So a couple of services that we offer and a few that you might not have thought about, but I'm going to start with a couple. A um, couple that we don't run, but I'm sure all of you have heard of, and if you haven't, you can send me an email. Uh, the first one is the Get Youth Working Program. Now, this program actually at this point in time has not got money, but every year it's a program that you have to keep your eyes open for in the spring. And what it is is if you hire somebody between the ages of 17 and 29, they will automatically give you $2,800 for keeping them on staff um, for a uh, couple months and they'll also offer a thousand dollars for training again a caveat to that it's not one of the work bc programs but it's a program that is being run and you can access it uh, it's accessed online now the other one is the opportunities fund now the opportunities fund is a program where if you have somebody who's disabled or self-disclosed disability and that could be somebody graduating again it's somebody that need some help, it will automatically, they'll be able to access uh, funding for a wage subsidy. So please keep that in mind. But the one thing I really want to talk about are two, well, basically two things, another type of wage subsidy, but also uh, the, the job start funds. If you have a new graduate, and I'll use an, a, a simple example, let's say somebody's taken a foundations course and they've got a, um, in carpentry and they need work boots, they need uh, to get to the site, maybe they need some gas money, uh, perhaps a few, few um, tools. These are things that we can offer. So at the end of the day, if you happen to know somebody you're gonna hire, or you know somebody looking, please send them down to one of our work BC centers. We can assess that. Again, for new graduates that are not returning to school, and I get back to that, new graduates not returning to school. So the other thing that we offer is something called the wage subsidy program which by the way has been around since the 1960s 
It used to be uh, under managed through the Canada Manpower, a federal program. It's now managed through the Work BC centers. Now, in that case, uh, we can offer 50% of the wage up to 24 weeks, and in certain cases, even more, depending on if the person has multi barriers or things like that. But in the case of a new graduate. Uh, we don't get a lot of people coming through, but new graduates are technically now looking for work. And if you're looking for work, you're declared unemployed, you're not going back to school, we can start accessing programs. The one that comes to mind with a new graduate would be uh, not everybody would, would qualify for this. However, if they've ever worked five of the last 10 years and made a minimum of $2,000 a year, and they paid taxes on that money, then they would qualify. So let me use an example. Let's say you had a 16-year-old who got a part-time job at Wendy's and they made 2,000 that year. The next year they got another part-time job at Tim Hortons, they made 2,000. Uh, maybe when they're 18, they get a, a summer job. Uh, and again, that's where you get to the point where they will absolutely qualify. And there are a lot of students in that situation. So you have to have that conversation with them, uh, send them down. Again, there are a lot of uh, ways that people can qualify for programs. Uh, they can, if they've ever collected EI, they can definitely qualify under that program. If they've ever had EI in the last five years, they qualify. If they're a single parent, you might want to send them down. So again, if you have somebody you're thinking of bringing in, they're somebody that can absolutely uh, use these programs, we would be willing to offset that wage for uh, by up to 50% and get them going from where you have them today to where you want them to be. Again, in general, we'll do it up to 24 weeks, but it can be longer or it'll be shorter depending on what you have and what your needs are. So again, if you have a person in that situation, do it. Now you as an employer, uh, you have a couple things that you have to meet. First of all, you have to have been in business at least one year. You have to be paying uh, remissions to Revenue Canada and they have to be up to date. You have to have WorkSafe work BC coverage. And those are the three main criteria. We also are looking for liability insurance, at least $2 million in liability insurance. Um, and you want to outline what you would be willing to do for that person. In other words, it's an on-the-job training program. And all it takes is about a half hour to fill out the application. If you fill all those, uh, that application, if you spend a lot more time on it, then you've probably gone too far. However, once you get it, you hire that person as any other employee. We reimburse you every month. You send in a claim form. It shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to fill that out. And then you, you get your money sent to you. So in that scenario, if you happen to have a new person graduating, please, if you do nothing else, at least have them go down to one of our work BC centers anywhere in BC and have them meet with one of the employment counselors. Now we're doing everything online and we do have a scenario right now where we can send out uh, applicants how you do that online. Um, so that's something that you want to be aware of. But again, you only know when you when you get there. So if you happen to be in Victoria, you might want to call the Work BC Center in Victoria. Uh, you can talk to one of the employment advisors or one of the people running the programs. Uh, Victoria, Cindy, or Tara run that program down there. Uh, the wage subsidy here in Nanaimo. I happen to run the program here with a guy named Roger. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're trying to run programs at the same time as get people jobs. So. If you happen to, again, have somebody you want to hire, please consider using that. And that's, uh, that's the sum of my uh, presentation. So if you have any questions, please, please uh, write them out, send them in, and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, thanks very much, uh, John. So um, I was just going to say, you do, have, you do have the ability to now share your screen if you have contact information up there, and maybe we can uh, pop that up for just a moment. Okay. Most of what you were speaking about had to do with the um, with the wage subsidy program, which is different than the uh, emergency wage subsidy program that the federal government has recently yeah. launched. So your uh, your your team doesn't doesn't deal with that program directly. This is a existing no. program that's been in place for a number of years.
Hello, John. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the federal program uh, is is new right now, but the other program's been around since the 1960s. Again, it was a federal program up until eight years ago. Uh, I was with it eight years ago, and um, it has changed very little. And the it's still offering the same kind of scenario. The only difference is it now will offer the ability for uh, somebody to um, access it who have, has never collected EI before. There are a number of scenarios where they can, can get it without ever having collected EI. So that's where I would think that you might want to have somebody, um, you know, let them know that the program exists. So. Okay, um, we're just going to try a technical thing here. If you could just put your phone on mute for a moment, and if we could try yep. to get the sound up for your your um, your video, yep. then we can see you when you speak. Do you want to try that now? John, can you speak? Can you just say a few words? Okay, no, I think we're having, we're still having sound problems on your end here. So, okay, well, we'll get, if you can. It's still going through the phone, but it's not going through the computer. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Well, we won't, um, we won't. Tempt Sorry it. about that. And I, that's no problem. So we do have a few questions here. I'm just going to go back. Some of them have to do with um, people who didn't quite hear the beginning of the program. So could you just re restate the name of the program that you mentioned at the very beginning? And that's for, okay, so there, uh, yeah, there are well, basically four programs. The first program would be the um, the wage, or sorry, the the job start funds, and that's for people that are starting a new job and the ability to get tools and get clothing. Um, we even had a scenario where a new lawyer got a gown to to practice in court. Um, we also then moved on to different types of wage subsidy programs. I mentioned the Get Youth Working program, but unfortunately it has run out of money at this point, but just be aware that that does come up. So it's good to look and check it out. Uh, the other one is the uh, Opportunities Fund, another um, federal program. It's run locally in Nanaimo by Ethos and Duncan by Ethos. Uh, I'm not sure who's running it uh, um, in Victoria, but it's online. You can go on and check it out. Uh, the other wage subsidies, the primary one that's changed that will allow new graduates, uh, which was what I'd mentioned about the uh, working five of the last 10 years, any kid that has had a scenario where a part-time job uh, would probably qualify if they've maintained that over the last five years before they graduated. So those are the primary programs. Great. Um, so the next question is, does the student need to make an appointment with you before coming to the center? Can they do it online or can it be done by phone? It can be done online. And we do have, um, uh, it's called the Online Employment Services Portal. Uh, the, uh, what they normally do is they go on there and then eventually they're gonna have to do what's called a terms of service agreement. But at that point, they're gonna phone or we're gonna have somebody phone them. And John, we've lost your sound. Yeah, no, I think your phone is, uh, I don't know if your phone is offline. Might have uh, disconnected. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, can you, we'll just try to see if we can get you. Can you hear me on the uh, computer? Yes. Yes, we can hear you on the computer now. Awesome. Okay. Okay. We go back. What, what did, what did we hear? And uh, let me continue. Um, I think it cut off about halfway in between. Okay. So basically, again, if you have somebody who's ever worked for five years, making a minimum of $2,000 a year, and they have uh, basically made money and contributed to EI, they will be considered full beneficiaries of the program. So. I go back to new students or new graduates. As long as they're not returning to school, they're considered now out in the workforce, they would be able to access that program if they've had a couple summer jobs, part-time job at Wendy's, Tim Hortons, something like that, they'd be able to access the program. Okay, can you just restate the name of the program for that a new graduate can apply for? 
Okay, so the if the if you're going to have a new graduate come in, I always say start with I'm interested in a wage subsidy program, anything. If there's an employer out there wanting it, uh, and what will normally happen is they will start by seeing if they qualify for the primary wage subsidy, which is the Work BC wage subsidy program. It has more money and there's more availability. If they don't qualify for that, the next step is to see if, if they have a disability, they would qualify for that. If they don't have that, the next normal step would be to look at the Get Youth Working Program. However, the addendum to that is the Get Youth Working Program ran out of money about a week and a half ago. So that being said, they probably will top it up again but you have to be on top of it. So again, for a person coming into our office, uh, signing up online, starting with, I want to see an employment advisor. And if it's an employer wanting to hire them, telling them that, you know, I've got a pending employee, uh, employment opportunity using a wage subsidy program, uh, tell them to say that because they will get bumped to the front of the line because we understand when employers want to hire somebody, they don't want to wait for her. So. Again, that's the sort of thing that we can do. Um, when uh, when we're describing a new graduate, uh, what is sort of the, the length of time that someone can be a new graduate? In other words, is there an age limit or is there a time limit after graduation? No, there isn't. No, no. No, okay. no, no age limit. Um, we do find a lot of the uh, mature grads quite often have gone uh, back to school after working. So they would qualify for programs right off the get-go. Um, but new grads, I always think of new grads that um, have never worked in the workforce. This is something, uh, if you would have asked me two years ago, is this something for them? We would never have been able to offer the Work BC Wage Subsidy Program. But that five years, minimum $2,000 a year, it offers something for students who have worked in those summers or worked part-time through high school and university. Um, so it works really well, but frankly, we don't get a lot of them coming through and I think a lot of uh, new grads don't realize they can offer uh, we can offer these services to them and also they uh, to go back to the uh, job start funding um, Somebody comes out of a, a, a course and needs to get that funding. I mentioned that we did it for the lawyer needing to get a gown by the way those gowns are quite expensive but the fact is we're willing to look at anything if the employer says this is what's needed to get them to start working. So if there's a barrier, we'll try and figure it out. We're not gonna pay exorbitant amounts of money to get people working, but we're definitely gonna try and eliminate as many barriers as possible to get them out there. So that's a good point. Is there, uh, what kind of relationship do you have with the post-secondary institutions in terms of getting in front of uh, yeah, so we have um, we have a youth outreach worker out of our office, and uh, I know there are youth outreach workers in other offices, and what they do is they try and set up meetings with, like, the colleges, universities, um, high schools. I'm pretty sure that we are, Michelle out of our office has been into Wellington and actually up to uh, Dover for some special program fairly recently before COVID. Um, so we're trying to get in front of them that way. Uh, but we're not always successful. It's always based on who's going to listen and who wants to attend. That's why I thought for an employer who thinks they might want to hire somebody to be aware that these programs are there. And if you do need to hire somebody, maybe stop and talk to them and say, have you talked to any of the work DC centers to see what they have to offer? Because we have uh, available funding and we don't always have available people to use that funding. So it could be a very good match. Um, so just back to the, the, the time limit. So you've, you've pointed out there is no age limit, but in terms of what is, what is the time limit look like for a new graduate? Is it 12 months? Is it, is it a longer period? No, so, so basically um, when I say last five of 10 years, so let's imagine you go back 10 years and you as a graduate graduated a year and a half or two years ago, but you worked five years going up to your graduation. So in theory, it's peeling off, but at the end of the day, you probably have another four to five years to qualify uh, if you don't get a job. That's the worst case scenario. Uh, but if you get a job, you'll probably qualify under the most recent programs. So. 
Um, do you have a sense of how many employers uh, are hiring students? Like who hires students regularly versus those that are, that are, that are new to this process? I do, I do. Actually, we do get a lot of calls from any people in the hospitality and tourism trade and also construction. Uh, we do get a lot of uh, summer work uh, programs uh, here in Nanaimo, the Port of Nanaimo always hires students. So there are a lot of different programs out there that will hire students. Uh, if there are a lot of students online right now, I really, again, talk about the idea. If you're graduating, please contact us. I've had a, uh, a number of contacts from uh, MBA students that'll be graduating soon or in the fall uh, looking for placements. Uh, but by reaching out, especially locally, uh, you're, you have a way better chance of getting into those companies. And if there are companies re, you know, considering whether you want to go that route, I really say there's a lot of ways to look at this, but please contact us. We can give you, um, make sure that you qualify right up front for any program. Uh, if you are talking about the Opportunities Fund or the Get Youth Working, I mentioned Get Youth Working, not having money right now, but there is an online portal uh, to go on and actually have those conversations. I know Bowman uh, Group out of the mainland runs the Get Youth Working program. Having a phone call and seeing where they see this funding going, I think makes sense. Uh, but for the other programs, absolutely, we, uh, I, I shake my head sometimes when I see people going and never come in our doors, uh, and they're missing opportunities. And that includes employers and people looking for work, for sure. Now, when we talk about graduates, are we just referring to post-secondary, or do we include high school students in there, too? Well, the problem with high school students is that they probably won't have that five-year work thing. So that's why I always say post-secondary. Unless they're a high school grad who has been working, but the reality is if you're a high school grad and you've been working for two or gone to school for two or three years or four years and you've got part-time work in that time, you're probably going to qualify for the program. So most high school students won't, but they will. If you graduate from high school, you're into a program like a, let's say you decide to become a carpenter. We can pay for your tools. We can pay for your gas money. We can pay for uh, work boots, things like that. So that's something for them to be aware of. And on top of that, sometimes if they're in dire, dire need, uh, we will help pay for the job search itself. So it really depends on their situation. Everybody is, is not painted with the same brush. Uh, it's always based on need when it comes to that. Um, we paying for a job search is usually when somebody's in dire financial need. I know a lot of students who are in dire financial need, so they might actually fit into a lot of this. So, yeah. so last question, uh, where can we find uh, information and resources? So what's the best place where we can go to get information on all Yeah, so go to the uh, WorkBC, um, any WorkBC site. Uh, it will talk about programs. Uh, they can get youth working program. .ca, I believe it's called getyouthworking.ca. The Opportunities Fund, in again, in Nanaimo, in Duncan, it's Ethos. Uh, you can talk to them. Uh, they will, will certainly walk you through that program. But again, the most money right now is with the WorkBC Wage Subsidy Program. So. Okay. And how can people get a hold of you? All right. So for me, uh, you can either Google me, John Tate, Say wage subsidy BC, and I come up. I'm all over the, the province now. Uh, or just uh, j.tate at uh, gthiringsolutions.ca. Uh, there are people in all the major cities doing this, but if you want to get a hold of me, uh, j.tate at uh, gthiringsolutions.ca, and we can go from there. I can give you information. Great. That's great. Well, thank you so much, John. We really appreciate yeah. the information. And uh, in spite of our technical challenges, we managed yep. to recover well. Yeah. Okay. So That's sorry great. Sorry about the uh, yeah, major technical challenges. Yeah, no, no well, thank problem. Thank you very much for everybody that's online for coming yep. out today. Great. great. Well, thank you very much. And today's session, has, uh, today's session has been recorded. It will be available on our webpage at bahia.ca. And do stay tuned for future sessions. If you have an idea for a future session, please share it with our president, George Hansen, at george at bahia.ca. Please do keep an eye out on your e-newsletters uh, for future events. In the meantime, please continue to keep good company 
and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.